the basic division that, that organizes our school, our graduate school, is between interpreting and translating. Traditionally, localization has come along to complicate things, but we'll look at that tomorrow. I want to challenge that basic division, and my reason is this, that the interpreter, oh, no, nobody loves theory, nobody likes theory. You know, every practitioner knows that they have got the correct way of doing it, and you don't need a, a, a stupid academic to come in with big ideas and theory and research to mess up your certitude. Okay? And that's everybody. That's the translators and the interpreters and the localizers. They all hate what I'm doing. I, I can live with that. <laughs> but it's the conference interpreters who are the most trenchant in their opposition and resistance. And that's why I'm especially interested in interpreting at the moment, and particularly conference interpreting. Now, I propose that the one-term translation should include both the oral rendition and the written rendition. That is, what's traditionally called translating and interpreting. Because I propose that the two are basically the same activity, and they differ not in kind, but in degree. I will not prove this to you, I don't have time, but I'll just make you worry about this for a few minutes at least. Uh, and this is important because it means, I believe, that everything I say about in translation as written production can be applied to oral production and vice versa. I don't think there's any need at all for separate theories. I will prove to you now that even the theorists of interpreting know that there's no difference. Because the main theorists of what's called the Paris School or the theory of sense, the of uh, which has worked on interpreting, uh, one of the main books is called Interprete pour traduire, Interpret to Translate. And that book does nothing but take the theory they developed by looking at conference interpreters and they propose that it's a good theory for the whole of translation. So I rest my case. A theorist of interpreting says. That's one group. Other people, now and then, including myself, but I was not the first, who are concerned with how we train you, how we train translators and interpreters, have proposed that our training should begin from oral work that instead of getting you to translate in the written mode, we should put you into an oral spoken situation with real participants and a real client and a real listener so that you break with what's known as primitive literalism. You know, when people don't know anything about translation, they start off as close to the text as possible. They don't want to deviate from it. They say, oh, can I? Can I use a different tense? Can I leave something out? And they feel very upset about this. But if you're doing it in the spoken situation, it's obvious that you can because you have to. You have to explain things, some things. You have to make them clear. You have to leave out some things that are irrelevant. You have to clean up the discourse. That is, the spoken situation, and here I'm not talking about the conference interpreting, I'm talking about between real people, teaches us what we should be doing in all forms of translation. That is, communicating between people and not reproducing a text. Those theorists would also agree with my proposition that it's a difference not in nature but in degree. This wonderful institution has long had a very peculiar practice which is called sight translation. Mm -hmm but it could be sight interpreting. It is, by definition, an overlap thing. Okay? Whenever you do that, you are proving to yourself that there's no real difference between the written and the spoken. Think about it when you're doing it. Now you say, we come into some difficult things. People who don't like my proposition, that the difference is degree and not kind, will say, 
that conference interpreters can produce simultaneously. All right? And translators cannot. Good argument? All right. Just watch this and you will see that in written translation there are moments when the hands are typing and the eye is looking at the source text. Just the same way these great conference interpreters are doing right now. Simultaneity, double cognitive activity, if the technology works.